Hello, welcome to the weather update. It's about 10 o'clock on the 6th of February, and yes, I apologize for not having a weather update yesterday, but uh, I just wanted to need to take a break. Can't do it every day, you know, and yesterday we had a lot of clouds around. Uh, we saw off clear skies, and then these clouds kind of just built in and rolled right in on us there, as you see there, as I tried to get the pines there in Deer Park uh, for a little bit. Uh, still some snow on the ground there, but a lot of clouds. Uh, and then later on, I was in Babylon, where there was a little less clouds, but I'll just show you Argyle Lake with the ice. I did not take a video, but uh, that's what it looked like with the ice. It was uh, pretty cool, actually. Um, so there's the ice. You can see there. Uh, ice there on the lake. It wasn't completely frozen over, but there was some ice there. And, uh, you know, some of the areas were frozen like this, but, yeah. Um, but, yeah, we had that. And then skies cleared out in the evening. Uh, we we had mostly clear skies by the evening. It was just a few clouds because, again, this cl what it was with the clouds yesterday, I'm going to explain it to you, but uh, there's just a lot of moisture in the air. Uh, and uh, when we had the sun came out, all these clouds popped up. And as far as today goes, uh, today was uh, had some high clouds, but then it was clear towards sunset. It was beautifully clear out. Uh, so anyway, uh, let's take a look at the satellite. Uh, and we'll go to the high-resolution satellite first, kind of show the story and first we'll go to yesterday and see what happened yesterday so we had these like streamers streamers of clouds come over us and it's just it was just from low level moisture and we look at the observations you'll see in a moment and again plenty of clouds over long island some areas like out east might have been clear as well as maybe parts of new jersey might have been clear um but uh, the clouds kind of just set up this 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 uh fetch of clouds and probably lake effect probably if anything remember the lakes used to freeze over but looking at the lakes you could see looks like there might be ice on this one but this one certainly is not frozen these are the great lakes uh, they used to freeze over every year by like by the end of by the beginning of january the lakes used to be frozen but that doesn't happen much anymore because again it's not cold enough for long enough to do that um and that's the problem so uh our current satellite loop you can sort of see uh some more of these low clouds coming in even some light rain uh, it's off the Jersey Shore. It's associated with this coastal system here. You'll see when we get to the models. You can see a little bit of that light rain off the shore of Atlantic City there. Uh, and then some of that's actually mixed precipitation, light mixed precipitation. Uh, so let's go to our temperatures here. And we'll look at uh, the past uh, this weekend at Islip. All right. So looking at Islip this past weekend, uh, you will see uh, as far as yesterday goes, uh, you could see we were reporting a lot of clouds. You could see all the, the cloud deck there being reported yesterday, and it was pretty persistent right through the morning, uh, late morning to the early afternoon. It was really, you could see broken uh, clouds there. And we only made, we didn't make it to freezing yesterday. We only made it to 29 at Islip. Uh, and then uh, you could see the dew points. Now, this is the story that I want to bring up here. Here's 11 a.m. Dew temperature 25, dew point 15 at Islip. That's not a big spread in the temperature and dew point. Uh, and uh, those dew points, when you have temperatures in the mid-20s, you need dew points in the single digits. If they're higher than that, chances are you're going to have clouds popping up, and that's exactly what wound up happening. Um, and then the low at Islip looks like it got down to 14 uh, last night. All right, we'll look at the lows and the highs for today. Uh, but let's go to uh, another site, uh, 22 at West Hampton. So West Hampton already has... Uh, has uh it's has it has had its temperatures rising and we didn't really get the radiational cooling we could have last night because the winds didn't really calm down though we did have mostly clear skies it got down to 10 degrees uh, uh but again you can see all the clouds there that wound up though they're not showing many clouds at west hampton later on in the day so i'm wondering if west hampton had a mostly clear sky or not um but um and then for today we had a few high cloud, a few high clouds. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, a few high clouds and a few cumulus. But today was actually turned out to be a lot sunnier, even though I thought we'd have this marine deck of clouds roll in on us. Today really would have been a better day to uh, go out there or at least try to see some pines. But I did it yesterday, and I didn't have the energy to do it today. So here you go, 30 uh, degrees for the high at West Hampton uh, for today. So let's uh, take a look and see uh, what our highs were across the area and our lows. So we'll start with the lows. Starting with the lows this morning, and let's see what we had across the area. So it looks like the we didn't really see any radiational cooling this morning. I guess the winds were just too high. Uh, 10 degrees at West Hampton. It's still cold, 15 at Ronkonkoma. 
but let's see if there was any radiational cooling in the, in the other Pine Barrens in New Jersey. Uh, it doesn't seem like they got any either. Let's see. Let's see if we can get that. No, nope, not really. Lows in the teens. All right, that's cold, but not as cold as it could have been if we had that radiational cooling, but the wind stayed up and kept the temperatures higher. Let's take a look at what our highs. What did I do? We actually make it above freezing today, and we did not. 29 at Islip was your high. 30 at West Hampton, and a little warmer in Jersey. It looks like 36 in uh, Tom's River. So that was above freezing there, but we never made it above freezing. And uh, again, when you look at this, you'll see we still have some snow cover persisting. Looks like now it finally melted in Jersey after today. Uh, actually, no, this is yesterday. Uh, actually, I'm showing yesterday. Um, again, in the morning, you can still see a little bit of snow there, especially in the morning. I don't know if this was in the morning or not, but you could see this is the clearest picture, satellite picture from yesterday, and you can see still snow cover on Long Island. There was a little bit of a coating from the night before. Um, and then we go to today, and you can see we dealt with a lot of more uh, high clouds. Uh, so the high clouds were around. And then we thought I thought that this bank of lower clouds was going to move in off the ocean, but it never really did. Uh, we had some pop-up clouds over the middle of the island, I mean, it wasn't a clear day, but it was more it was sunnier than yesterday, for sure. But the models had indicated that this batch of clouds was going to come in and we were going to be overcast by noon. But that didn't happen. That, that, those marine stratocumulus clouds didn't roll in until this evening. Um, so let's look at the models and take a look and see what we've got coming up as we deal with uh, a little bit of a, mi a moderating trend in uh, the pattern here. And I'm going to go first to the uh, North American view so we can look at the jet stream here. Uh, because we're seeing changes in the jet stream that are going to take us into a milder pattern. All right, so starting to see that ridge develop in the east. And they're troughs, but they're not as deep. Um, you can see they're not as deep. And the way the troughs are setting up, you can see they're not digging down as much. So that means not as much cold air comes into the picture, at least for now. But then around Valentine's Day... We're going to start to see more cold air probably enter the picture yet again. And you can see the troughiness coming back in the east at that point. So that means when we go to the Kona's view and we look at uh, we look at the upper air here, we'll see that this week we're going to have some gentle ridging in place. All right. But then, uh, then as you get toward that Valentine's Day, here comes a trough that comes through. And you're going to have uh, some more ridges and some more troughs coming through. So... That basically means that we'll have, it's not, it, it, we're going to have some breaks from the, uh, the we're going to have some above normal temperatures, but then we'll have, we'll have more cold temperatures. We'll be as frigid as what we're dealing with right now. It doesn't look like it. So this is the 18Z GFS and our temperature anomaly chart. And you will see here uh, that we're close to normal this week, but then we go above normal on Wednesday, looks like. Um, and then uh, more cool air tries to enter the picture on Friday. But you can see it only gets us to near normal. Uh, we have to wait until that stronger trough comes through Sunday into Monday. That's going to bring some more colder air. You can see, but nothing really, nothing really frigid until we get toward the end of the period where it's trying to trying to bring some more really frigid air back into the picture. Um, so not really, we didn't really get a real polar vortex this time. Uh, it was cold, but you know, not a real polar vortex like like we had a couple of years ago. But it's still a decent January over and all that and. So far, February is getting off to a pretty decent start too, as far as temperatures go. Now, as far as the skies go, yeah, that could be a bit, that could be a better story. Um, so let's go look at the surface. Uh, so you can see there is that uh, weak, like coastal system there that's going to bring us, and it's coming a little closer for us. So it looks like we're going to be getting now because it's milder. We're going to see mostly rain with this. Chances of rain tomorrow into tomorrow night moves away Tuesday. Fair weather for uh, much of the week after that. Uh, and as far as our next chance of precipitation, we may not have one for a while. So it looks like we're going into a seasonal, somewhat mild, but drier pattern. Uh, and then we have to wait until um, we have to wait until maybe maybe uh, all the way till the 19th before we have another significant precipitation event. And it looks like a little clipper coming through right there toward the end. And again, this is the 18Z GFS that we are looking at. Um, so let's take a closer look at the Northeast and our, our next system so that we're dealing with here. So this is the HRRR. We'll start off with that one here, uh, which is bring, going to bring us the rain. You can see already some light mixed precipitation breaking out probably early this morning, 
probably around sunrise or a little bit before then. Uh, but then the warmer air moves in, temperatures rise above freezing, uh, and then we have by late morning into the early afternoon just plain rain showers. And we're going to have these rain showers persisting on and off. It looks like it's just going to be a rainy day tomorrow, unfortunately. Uh, but this will be the last one we're going to have to deal with for a while, I think, after this we get into a drier pattern. But we're dealing with that rain. Uh, it should take care of what's left of the snow, hopefully. And that rain's going to continue through the night. Could actually wind up getting heavy later on. Um, a heavy, steady period of rain. This is with this coastal low. You can see a heavy, steady period of rain moving in around midnight uh, tomorrow night. So around tw uh, 24 hours from now, a little while we're going to have some steady to heavy rain with this coastal low tracking closer to the coast. But because it's warmer air, uh, it's going to be uh, in the form of rain, this precipitation. All right, if we look at the total accumulated precipitation here, you can see we could see between a half an inch to an inch or maybe even more than an inch of rain, especially the further east you go. And again, this is the HRRR model uh, at 0Z that it's showing this, all right? Uh, and we show you the temperatures here. You'll see uh, with that onshore flow, actually, it'll show you the dew point and wind first so you understand where the air is coming from. So you see we have an onshore flow, uh, and it stays onshore tomorrow, uh, and that's going to keep uh, dew points above freezing, and it's going to bring in warmer air off the ocean, so that means we won't have to worry about any frozen precipitation. And the winds don't really become north or northwest until as the storm pulls after the storm pulls out Tuesday morning. And then we have it into that northwest to west flow, which will bring drier air into the picture. All right. Looking at the temperatures here. So here are the temperatures. And again, you see that uh, we have temperatures uh, tomorrow that will be above freezing. But without the sun, clouds and showers around, the temperatures probably won't get all that warm. They'll be above freezing, probably up around 40 degrees, uh, but that's going to be it. And then we really don't cool off that much Tuesday morning. We're still above freezing. And then for Tuesday, uh, we're going to have that colder air coming in. So probably highs in the upper 30s, probably, according to the HRRR. It seems to be a little colder uh, for Tuesday than its previous run. All right. Uh, but let's go back to the precipitation board here and look at the NAM. This is the NAM 3 kilometer, the high resolution NAM. So you see, again, those showers that are uh, breaking out there, and we're going to be dealing with that. It seems to be an agreement on that. Uh, there's be a shower activity in the afternoon, maybe a little break in the early evening, and then more steady stuff comes in on the overnight there, though the NAM seems to have a little more of it further east um, uh, versus, our, for, versus uh, right over uh, Nassau County. It seems to be more over the east end there. Uh, but let's take a look and see what the total uh, rainfall accumulations are. And you see, yeah, it pushes it to a little more east than the HRRR. But generally, this thing is the more east you go, the more of a chance of that heavier rain you're going to get. Um, the city and west may miss out on a lot of that rain for tomorrow night. Let's now, being that we're in this, let's look at the sky mode here. Obviously, we're going to have plenty of clouds tomorrow. And as far as Tuesday goes, Starting off with clouds, and then uh, maybe we can lose some of the clouds by the afternoon. Uh, and then for Wednesday, uh, well, this doesn't go as far out, far enough out for Wednesday. So let's go to the RGM now. All right, I'm not going to use the 0Z. We'll use the 18Z RGM. Uh, and again, showing those clouds for tomorrow. Uh, and I'm using this for the sky. It's showing Tuesday to be a, a clear day, though, at least. And then maybe Wednesday, too, being a clear day. All right. So both of those days look clear right now. Let's go back to the GFS and push this along and look at our temperatures as we get later on into the week. Um, so Tuesday, let's take a look at Tuesday's GFS. The GFS is a little warmer. It has temperatures around 40. So I'm thinking around 40 degrees. Probably, probably we'll be above freezing on Tuesday. So close to average. Uh, and then for Wednesday, we go above average here. So temperatures get into the mid-40s. Look at that at 50 over Tom's River there in New Jersey. Um, and then uh, even warmer for th even warmer probably for Thursday with the southwesterly flow. Have temperatures still around 50. But here comes the next cold front. Friday, we're back into the low to mid-30s. But then it's only one day. And then, boom, warms back up again. <laughs> warms back up again Saturday. <laughs> and then, excuse me, and then a stronger cold front comes through for Sunday. That brings in some cold air, but no, real bitterly cold air in this forecast. I'll move this along here. See some cold air, but no real bitter cold air. You have some warm air, warm-ups, but I don't see any really bitter cold air in this forecast. So the Arctic air 
Uh, we'll not be uh, back for a while, I'm afraid. Well, I think we need a little bit of a break from it. And I need a little break of it, from it, but, uh, um, you know, I mean, we had some of it, but, again, we, uh, as far as uh, February goes, probably going to be close to normal and not as cold as January. Um, but let's go take a look at, the main thing is we want to have some clear days. That's just what I... It's good weather right there, January, but we didn't really have a ton of clear days with it. Uh, let's go, and that was just because of the way it was. It was still, it was still like kind of transient. We didn't really have really excellent blocking. Um, if we had excellent blocking, then it would have been a better situation. But we didn't really get that. Not a pole of vortex, but definitely, a, finally, a month that I could call worthy of uh, at least a path month, worthy of having what I would call more normal winter weather. Um, so let's go look at the client prediction center now, and you'll see the six to ten day outlook still has us well, slightly below, and then the eight to fourteen still slightly below in the east, precipitation below normal uh, for the east. So that's when we want to be in a drier pattern. So let's just go to windy uh, yeah, Excuse me for yawning. Uh, so we'll look at the clouds on this. And this is the European model now showing, and this shows clouds and precipitation. So it's not really showing a whole lot of precipitation. It's a lot drier than, uh, you can see there's that wave that forms along it. So it's going to be interesting to see where that wave winds up. Uh, if it's further east, then most of the rain's going to go east. But I know I think we're going to get glanced by. So this is a Tuesday, 4 in the morning. Let's see what happens when we get to 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Start clearing those skies out, hopefully, and having some clear skies. Yeah. There you go, some clearer skies there. What about Wednesday? And Wednesday looks like a clear day too, so hopefully we'll get some clear days, because it's like I said, we've got a lot of a lot of clouds lately. It hasn't been great. Uh you know, today was a lot sunnier than I thought it would be, but you know, that's what it is with the models, you know. Um, you know, it was better than this. I mean this was this was today, uh, and then yesterday. Yesterday we had a lot more clouds over Long Island. But uh there you go, so I guess that's going to wrap up this weather update. Um, so hopefully we can get some clear days because, like I said, we've had uh, we've had a lot of cloudy days. I mean, not, it, it's been worse, but again, you look at the uh, weather we've had, and we haven't really had those too many of those days where we've had really nice, clear skies. Um, usually you do when you get the cold air, but it just this doesn't always happen that way, you know. It's uh, Wait, but at least I can say that it does not look like we're going to see any major storms in this forecast as far as snow goes. Um, let me just go back to the tidbits model for a moment uh, and look at the skies on the GFS and see if we can. This is going to be for, this is going to be the sky forecast on the GFS. So you just see what it looks like. You know, Wednesday looks like it could be a sunny day, and Thursday looks like we'll be dealing with some more clouds. Friday might be a sunny day. We'll have to see what happens. And then past that, it looks like a lot of junk. And then maybe Saturday or maybe Monday. But uh, there you go. So it looks like we do have some clear days coming up. Just got to be patient. That's all. Hopefully we'll get a clear day. Clear day. Temperatures in the 30s would be uh, great. You know, a little above freezing again because it's been it's been a little little cold out there. You know? <laughs> got to melt the, whatever's left of the snow, too. It's ridiculous. All right. So let me just go to the icon model and I'm just going to go to the conus view and I just want to see if it has any different ideas all right this is the zero z which you don't have enough of the problem with the 18 z run it doesn't go far enough so we got to go to the 12 z run uh and see what it does I just want to see what it does with a couple of these storm systems toward the to the week here as far as next week goes that valentine's day time frame so this is the storm the next storm that we would have to watch but again, it looks like it's going to stay offshore. But you remember what happened with the last major snowstorm? We thought it was going to stay offshore. And then in the last five days, the model said, it ain't going out to sea. So yeah, you have to expect the unexpected. Let's hope we're done with the snow for a while. I've had enough of it. So uh, that's going to be it for this weather update. Take care and thanks for watching.